In this episode, <clears throat> I want to dedicate the entire time to talking about one of the most significant problems facing the nail industry, and that is adverse skin reactions. Now, adverse skin reactions occur in every area of the professional salon industry. Nails, skin, hair services, they can all cause problems for sensitive clients and for beauty professionals themselves. So I want to take the time to discuss adverse skin reactions, why they occur, how to identify them, and more importantly, how to avoid them. When it comes to nail salons, the vast majority of adverse skin reactions can be easily avoided if you understand how. Generally speaking, adverse skin reactions come in two varieties, irritation and allergy. When something irritates the skin, reddening, reddening, inflammation, itching, these are often the result. But when the irritating substance is eliminated or removed, well, the skin returns to normal and the irritations will heal. Allergies are very different. One main difference is that irritations go away once the irritant is removed. With allergies, they last a lifetime. They never go away, and their symptoms can worsen over time. These symptoms may subside, but they can be triggered again at any time, and sometimes even with the slightest exposure. <clears throat> the medical term for skin allergy is allergic contact dermatitis. These types of skin allergies account for approximately 80% of all cosmetic-related skin problems. So it's very important to understand that people, how this happens. And one thing that people don't understand is that they don't become allergic to cosmetic products. No, we become allergic to certain cosmetic ingredients. Usually the fragrances or preservatives are the culprits. Now these kinds of ingredients can be very beneficial for the vast majority of people, and most will never have any problems at all with them. But a small number of people may develop skin allergies when significant overexposure occurs. Any substance or ingredient that can cause a skin allergy is called an allergen. In other words, allergens are substances which upon exposure can cause an allergy. Now, it's a pretty common myth that just about any substance can cause allergies. This is completely false. Only certain substances can cause allergic reactions. Water or acetone, for instance, do not cause allergies. Excessive exposure to either of these may cause irritation, but neither one of them is capable of triggering an allergic reaction. And not everyone is allergic to a specific allergen. That often depends on the individual's immune system. Now, the second important point to understand is that allergies to cosmetic products don't just suddenly develop. Symptoms may take months or even years of repeated skin contact before they will appear. The process of developing an allergy to a particular substance is called sensitization. For this reason, allergens are often referred to as sensitizers. The substance that causes the allergy is either referred to as sensitizer or an allergen. Those two terms are used interchangeably. For example, tree pollen is a common allergen, as is cat hair, dust mites, bee stings, mold, nickel, and latex. What do these all have in common? They're all naturally occurring substances. That's not a coincidence. Most allergies are caused by naturally occurring substances. Our immune systems are designed to protect us from nature. And nature is not the la-la land that many mistakenly believe it is. Nature is a dangerous place filled with all types of naturally occurring and potentially harmful substances. Our immune systems are designed to protect us from naturally occurring dangers, such as viruses and bacteria. It's a common myth that allergic reactions are caused by synthetic substances. That's not true at all either. The facts are, when a synthetic substance triggers an allergic reaction, it happens because the immune system was fooled into thinking the offending substance was natural. The immune system has no way to distinguish between natural and synthetic substances. So problems occur when the body mistakes synthetic substances for a substance that could be potentially harmful. 
Sometimes the immune system will overreact to a harmless synthetic substance when, the, when it's mistaken for a potentially dangerous natural substance. Now, at this point, it's probably important for me to explain to you how the immune system works. The immune system is like an army that never forgets. It's a massive fighting force that has the ability to wage a full-scale war against any foreign aggressors on our, on our bodies. Anything outside the body trying to attack us would be considered an aggressor by the body, and the immune system would spring into action. Now, like any army, the immune system has uh, has army, uh, has privates, I should say, have privates, they have generals, they have spies, assassins, they have sentries, they have scouts, the whole gamut. Certain parts of the immune system can act as spies or sentries. They roam the body, constantly on the lookout for potentially dangerous invaders. The immune system spies memorize the details about the attacker and they'll describe it in detailed messages they send back to the generals. These spies even bring back prisoners for inspection. The generals then send messages to alert the immune system army of a possible invasion, and they provide a description of the invading substance so the army can be on the lookout. Once the substance is under control and the threat is eliminated, the immune system strengthens its defenses and patiently waits for the next attack. When or if it comes, the immune system will be ready and prepared. In medical terms, this is called an immune response. Our bodies have two separate immune systems, one that protects the inside of our body, but we have a second immune system in our skin that protects us from the outside world. Let's look at some examples so we can better understand irritants and allergens so that we can avoid their potential to harm the skin. Cleansing agents used in shampoos, Hand body washes, etc. These all contain ingredients that remove oil from the skin. These ingredients are called surfactants. Washing the hands too often can remove excessive amounts of surface oils and can give the skin a whitish appearance that may eventually cause the surface to flake or peel. The hands may even become red or inflamed, which are additional signs of skin irritation. In this case, if the hands were not washed as often, washing them less often, I should say, they wouldn't be so irritated and the appearance of the skin would improve. Usually, irritations will quickly reverse themselves when exposure to the irritating substance ceases or as the exposure is less. As mentioned before, water can also be an irritant. When hands are always wet, they can become irritated. Interestingly, some claim that constant water exposure dried out their skin, which of course makes no sense. Water makes things wet, not dry. But this goes to show how many people don't pay attention to the words they use, which just adds to the confusion. But it also makes it more difficult for them to find viable solutions if they don't understand the source of their problem. Skin allergies can and do cause many of the same symptoms as irrit irritants do. For example, both irritation and allergies can cause skin redness, swelling, itching, tiny blisters, even nail onycholysis and painful growth of pterygium underneath the free edge of the nail plate. These symptoms may appear similar, but the difference is that once you become allergic to a substance, you will be allergic to it for your lifetime. Your skin's immune system will always remember that it's allergic to that particular substance, and it will rapidly react when direct skin exposure occurs. We don't become allergic to vapors, only via direct, prolonged, and or repeated contact with specific substances in the liquids or solids that touch our skin. Only very potent allergic sensitizers could trigger uh, allergic immune response after just a few exposures. For instance, some certain, certain types of poisonous plants can do this. Potent allergens are not used in salon products. In fact, they're not used in cosmetics, and they're very carefully avoided by those who manufacture and supply cosmetic products or ingredients. Some ingredients, monomers and oligomers, for instance, used in nail coating products, they can be weak sensitizers for some individuals. This means that the ingredients are unlikely to cause allergic reactions under normal conditions of use. 
Even so, prolonged and or repeated skin contact with these products can cause some sensitive people to become allergic. Now I keep mentioning this, prolonged and or repeated contact, because this is the number one cause for allergic reactions to nail coatings. Prolonged contact happens when ingredients are allowed to sit on the skin for prolonged periods of time. For example, sticky UV gels on the skin all day long. That's prolonged contact. Repeated contact occurs when the same area of the skin is touched many times with the same allergen or nail coating product. In this case, we're talking about. An example would be a contaminated nail brush handle that's held between the same fingers day after day, or a contaminated table towel where the arm rests on top of an area where monomer or UV gel has been brushed, or laying arms in the dust or filings of improperly cured UV gel products or improperly cured liquid and powder, or using bare fingers to pick at the hairs on your monomer or gel brush, uh, your application brush or even repeatedly touching the sticky inhibition layer that sometimes forms on top of certain nail coating products. Artificial, nail, artificial coating products don't cause clients to become allergic after a single exposure. Sensitization to nail coatings typically takes four to six months or longer of direct exposure. So one of the very best ways to avoid skin allergies is to avoid prolonged and repeated skin contact. Certain clients' skin may be more sensitive than others. For example, pale skin is usually more sensitive to allergens than darker pigmented skin. Some clients or nail technicians may be overexposed for many years before eventually becoming allergic, while others develop initial symptoms after just a few months. Usually, symptoms will often worsen with each continued exposure until even the slightest contact with the allergen can trigger a major outbreak in visible symptoms. Determining the cause of allergic reactions can be tricky because unlike contact dermatitis, or irritant contact dermatitis, the symptoms are not always restricted to the contact area. Usually they are, but sometimes swelling can occur far away from the point of contact, for instance, in the armpits or the glands in the throat or the groin. In rare instances, some people will develop hives, which are also called welts. Hives give the appearance, uh, can appear on your wrist, arms, face, or neck, and they're usually caused, again, by direct skin exposure to dust or improperly cured nail coating products, which is why it's important not to touch our faces, with especially a product on our hand, and why it's important to ensure that the nail coatings are properly cured and the dust in the salon should be cleaned up and not allowed to accumulate. Hives are smooth, slightly elevated area on the skin. The area is either redder or paler than the surrounding skin, and sometimes, even often, is accompanied by severe itching. Hives may change shape or size or disappear within a few hours. Now, many other things are much more likely to cause hives. Foods, medication, plants, clothing. So don't automatically assume that hives are related to cosmetic ingredient sensitivity. Typically, allergic contact symptoms are restricted to the site of contact, and that should be your very first clue. Look at what repeatedly contacts that site of where the reaction is occurring over the past several months or years. Many are surprised to learn that allergic reactions often appear after several months or years of exposure. And this can fool nail technicians into believing that the cause is something new or recent for instance, a new polish or a new lotion, they don't realize it's probably something they've been using or doing for a very long time. Fortunately, tracking down the source of an allergy becomes a lot easier if you know what to look for. The first symptoms are a temporary reddening or warming sensation that occurs directly at the site of contact. Now, if overexposure continues, the skin may appear dry, tight, flaky, or itchy. And again, they just appear dry. It's not really lacking moisture. It just has that appearance. 
In later stages, water blisters or raised red bumps are often seen around the epinichium or at the fingertips. And these may, there may also become an overgrowth of tissue underneath the free edge, which its actual name for this tissue is called pterygium. Now, if overexposure continues, these symptoms likely will worsen. Water blisters may develop into open sores. The fingertips may become cracked or feel numb, or an annoying itch may develop underneath the nail plate. Nail technicians' wrists or arms may also develop similar symptoms if the arm is repeatedly exposed to monomer, UV gels, or improper, from improperly cured gels or liquid and powders I mentioned earlier. When this occurs, it would be wise, when an allergy occurs, you become allergic to a product that you're using or an ingredient in that product, it would be wise to discontinue use of the product and to immediately change your work practices to eliminate the overexposure to the skin so this doesn't repeat itself with another product. <clears throat> All artificial nail products, including UV gels, gel manicures, wraps, adhesives, monomer and polymer systems, these can all cause allergic reactions in sensitive individuals, but none of them need cause these problems. Adverse skin reactions are completely avoidable by ensuring that undercured or improperly cured nail coating, dust and filings or products, or adhesive products don't come in contact with living skin, including your own. Each exposure increases the potential risk for irritation or allergy. Since at first there are no obvious negative effects when the skin exposure happens, many nail technicians don't realize the risk they're taking. They don't see anything happen, so they think, well, everything is fine. This is one reason why it's extremely important that you always leave a small margin between the product application and the client's skin. Responsible and safe nail professionals will never intentionally touch any enhancement product to the skin. Other important tips to remember in order to avoid adverse skin reactions are Monomer liquid should only be used with the correct polymer powder, which is the one that's designed specifically for that particular monomer liquid. There's no such thing as a universal powder that works with any monomer liquid or vice versa. The, the opposite is tr not true either. There's no monomer that works with any powder. And using too much monomer liquid and not enough powder can create dust or filings that are only partially cured, and this will increase the risk of allergic reactions. So beads should be of a medium consistency, never wet, since this extra monomer in the bead can lead to under curing. Also, using an overly large brush can cause skin overexposure to clients, so avoid using them. Large brushes hold too much liquid monomer, and this can lead to coatings that have too much monomer, or and which, uh, which I should say will make the dust or the filings more likely to cause adverse skin reactions to the nail professional. Finally, all UV curing coatings must be properly cured using the correct UV nail lamp, exposing the nail coating for the proper length of time or adverse reactions become more likely, as I pointed out in several times in this video episode series. The correct lamp is the one that's specified by the UV gel manufacturer. Now, if no lamp is specified, I'd recommend finding and using a system that provides users with this information. 